Hello, everyone. Let's go through our final assignment. In this assignment, uh, we have asked you about grouping genes. And we should know about exactly which measures we are talking about here. What's our goal here? For different genes, we can see that we run experiments and we found out about the gene expressions. When I talk about gene expressions, let me remind you that they are mRNA level or maybe protein level. So whatever you see here as numbers, there are levels related to mRNA and protein. And we call them gene expression. Oh, I didn't specify, for example, whether this is related to mRNA or protein anyway. And our goal is to find such a table first. G1, G2 to G5. G1, G2, again to G5 as the distance matrix. So I need to calculate each one of these cells. For example, what's the value of this one? What's the value of this one? And so on. For the distance matrix, doesn't matter which measures you are taking. As you know, diagonals should be always zero because the distance of the same items are zero. So these are the ones that we should calculate. And as you know, this is symmetric. It means that if you calculate this one, this one automatically will be calculated. So you need to just fill this part of the table and the rest is obvious. You don't even need to uh, type them. And as soon as you do that, based on this distance matrix, you can uh, apply a specific algorithm. And we ask you to go through UPGMA. And by using that algorithm, you can even construct phylogenetic tree. So at the end, when you go through that algorithm, even for this assignment, it's nice to construct phylogenetic tree. And in the final exam, if we ask you to group the genes, instead of analyzing it, you can just simply, after going through finding the distance metrics and after that uh, applying the algorithm, then construct a phylogenetic tree, and that would be the final answer. Now, for each item, we ask you to find, to group them using different measures. For the first one, we ask you to apply Euclidean. So the formula should be written. This is the general formula related to that. And as you can see, it is symmetric. It means that it doesn't matter which one you consider. You can just write this part and this part, and that's good enough. Now, instead of N, what should I write here? We have how many experiments, OK? Because we are comparing gene 1 and gene 2 in different experiments. So how many times I should get this summation? It should be four times, OK? We should be careful about it. So n here is actually related to number of experiments, not number of genes. Now assume that I want to calculate, for example, this cell distance between G1 to G2. So for each one of them, we should write it. G1, G2. So this one should be the summation. And then at, at the end, the square root of that. You don't need to write the sub formula for this one. This is obvious. So when you write this part right away, you can assign values from it. That's OK. So what you are going to do is to get the distance between these two, subtraction. So 
6.2 minus 7.3. So you see it's negative. That's why we power it by 2. So power 2. One by one you should do it for the rest of them. So what you are doing here, you are comparing G1 with G2, Gene 2. You see? G1, G2. And then uh, for each experiment you should do that. That's why we, we have n equal to 4 here in this formula. So next one will be 6.6 .6 minus 7.6. And by the way, uh, when we are talking about gene expressions, usually the decimal points is much more than just one point, as you can see here. But anyway, for simplicity, for calculation, sometimes we may do that. Uh, for you guys, uh, when you are uh, writing all of them, please write all the values. Don't put three dots here, okay? Write the, all the values so we understand exactly which numbers you applied for subtractions. So that it will be a complete solution. Okay, so at the end you will find the answer for this element of the matrix. And this value should be either uh, zero or a positive number. And uh, it really happens to be zero because they are not exactly the same. So uh, it should be a positive number usually here. So you calculate each one of them for gene one with gene two, gene one with, with gene three, gene 2 with gene 5, all of them. Then you complete the table. As soon as you complete the table, as I said, then use the algorithm UPGMA, and uh, you can put them in clusters, and at the end, you can construct the phylogenetic tree, and that's the final answer for this part. So what's the difference between other parts and uh, the first part. The only difference is the uh, distance measure. So for the other item, in order to find the table, again, you should have the same table, but this time, most probably, you will get different values. So here also for the row, you see exactly the same titles for the rows and columns, but here the values that you will calculate, for example, for this one and so on, they are most probably different from the one that you found before. So when you apply UPGMA, you will reach different phylogenetic tree, most probably. If not, this is a good thing. It means that you are grouping genes most probably correctly. If we understand that we apply different distance measure and you find you find out that uh, they are exactly the same construction of phylogenetic trees, this is very good news. It means that most probably they should be in the same group. So that's why it's important to know about different distance measures in order to know and make sure that uh, these genes are better to be in the same group or not. And you may ask me, is it again 100%? No, again, it's not 100%, but at least we are more confident about it. Now about the cosine formula, there is an update, as you can see. In the lectures, I forgot to give you this part of the formula. So for the final exam, please make sure that you write the, fine, uh, the correct formula for that. Because this part of the formula uh, shows more like the similarity of these two genes. And that's why I should find the complement of them. Uh, it's important that the final answer be positive. In this case, it, was a, it wasn't the problem because uh, this ratio is actually a value between 0 and 1. So 1 minus that value should be, again, uh, a value between 0 and 1. No problem regarding the sign, but it will show you the inverse of the uh, thing that you are looking for. So that's why 
I need to find the complement of that to make sense that when you find minimum for this D, then there should be in the same group. But if you consider only this part, it means that the maximum value should be in the same group, two different things. Okay, so please add this one in the formula so that there will be no problem uh, to find the distance matrix. Now, let's try, for example, for gene one and gene two again to see what are the differences. So you write the general formula and then you write this part and directly you can assign the numbers without considering the sub formulas. So here, oh, sorry, I, I got used to Euclidean. You don't need to find the square root. So let me write it here maybe. From the beginning, I write it here. G1 and G2 is equal to, forget about this part. So one minus this ratio. So what is this ratio? It says that summation of Xi and Y1, the multiplication of them. Multiplication of these two plus multiplication of these two, and you continue until the last one. So it will be something like this, 6.2 multiply 7.3 plus you continue until the last one. And in the final exam, please write all the values and don't put three dots between them. Okay, so this is for this part of the ratio and for this part you have a square root of two things. So here you should power each one of them by two separately. It means that 6.2 power two plus 6.6 .6 power two plus and go on. So it will be like this, 6.2 power two, you continue until the Last one, the same we should do for gene number two. So it should be 7.3 power two plus and you continue. So 7.3 power two and you continue until the last value which is seven power two. Okay, then you can find about the value related to that specific cell here. And as I say, it's not necessary to write anything here, but if you do, this one should be exactly the same as this one. Okay, uh, about Manhattan. Manhattan is pretty easy. So you just get the absolute value of the difference between these two. So what you do, for example, for, again, G1 and G2. You find the absolute value of the difference between these two. So 6.2 minus 7.3. You get the absolute value of that plus. Then you continue 6.6 .6 minus 7.6. And you continue out in the last one and you find the final answer. In terms of calculation, this one is the easiest we could say. So here, as you can see, the distance for sure will be a positive value. So we can easily use it in the distance metrics. For cosine formula, uh, you may ask me why not, for example, this part of the ratio is always positive. Why not uh, a negative? Uh, because in a statistic, it sounds like covariance. No, covariance is something like the one we had in Pearson distance. You are subtracting it from the mean values. Okay. So 
here what you get is the values themselves multiplying with each other. You may say, okay, if one of them is negative, the other one is positive, then this one could be negative and the whole ratio will be negative. It won't be the case either because we are talking about gene expressions. So there are mRNA and protein level, they are always positive. Uh, they cannot be negative, for example, gene expression. We don't have such a thing. So. For sure, this part should be between 0 and 1, and the final answer, when you subtract it, uh, it will be again between 0 and 1. By the way, since we talked about the correction related to cosine formula, I mentioned about the Pearson as a correlation, and these parts, we call them similarities like very uh, similar to the ones that we talked about the scoring metrics. I already told you about correlation and I said also Pearson will, won't appear in your final exam. Um, but just for you guys to know that if you want to find the distance metrics using the Pearson, then it is possible again by finding the complement. So here, well, what are the values? What do you think? Well, what are the possible values that you can get from this part of the formula? Do you remember from statistics for those guys who took it from me? It should be between minus one to one. So here you see, we may find out that one of them is negative, the other one is positive, then this part would be negative. And this part of the ratio, this is for sure positive. So the whole thing could be negative here. And in the uh, case that this is the highest value of negative, then we will have minus one, the smallest value that this one can get. So here, what you will have is one minus, for example, if this is minus one, it will be two. If this is 1, then it will be 0. So the values that you will find here will be between 0 and 2. But anyway, I'm not going to ask you about Pearson because we are going to practice it in a statistic course. But we need to know about Manhattan, about cosine formula, and about Euclidean. And at the end, don't forget, the goal is to group them. So we need to use UPGMA. You already know it from uh, previous assignments. And then uh, construct the phylogenetic tree as the final answer, and it will be over. OK, guys, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, next Wednesday will be our final online session. We will talk about lecture 14. And by the way, uh, there is a change in the final exam date, as the department mentioned. So uh, I already announced it. So very soon you will receive an email which mentions about the new exam date for your final. It will be between January 18 to 13. So it will be announced to you for sure. If you have any questions, please let me know now.